NASA's Webb telescope strikes again with another incredible image. Yeah, take a look. NASA sharing this on social media today. You are looking at what they call a supermassive black hole gobbling gas and dust. The We're going to learn what happened as this universe developed over the last 13.8 billion years. As we identify other planets and Four hundred million suns in one pinprick of darkness. Just let that sit for a second. That's the new mass tag on a black hole lounging inside a galaxy so tiny and ancient it really ought to know better. The James Webb Space Telescope spotted it napping. No scream of X-rays, no dramatic jets, only a soft infrared glow and a galaxy that's 40% black hole by weight. If your brain just went, wait, what? Perfect. Keep that feeling. Everything we thought we knew about how galaxies and black holes grow up together is about to get yanked apart and rewritten. Picture walking into a pitch black room and realizing the silhouette on the wall isn't furniture. It's a lion. You can't see the lion itself, just the space it carved out of the light. JWST looked at Galaxy GS-10578 and saw exactly that. The giveaway wasn't neon signs like Vegas, it was a pair of neon ions, NEV and NE3, glowing a shy infrared red in Neocam. Those lines are the bruises left when a long-gone accretion disk punched the surrounding gas. But right now, the disk is basically on a diet, running at 1% of the Eddington limit, the cosmic speed cap on feeding. Translation, the lion is yawning, not hunting. Still, the weighing scale reads 4.1 times 10 to the power of 8 solar masses. Sagittarius, a star, the black hole at our galactic center, is 4 million suns. This newcomer is a hundred times heavier and parked inside a galaxy one thirtieth the Milky Way's mass. Forty percent of the whole galaxy is one black hole. If your body were forty percent liver, you'd look like a biology experiment. So how did a cosmic kindergartner end up hosting a sumo wrestler? GS 10578 emitted its light toward us when the universe was approximately 600 million years old an infancy stage for cosmic evolution. Traditional astronomical models suggest that black holes form starting from relatively modest seeds, usually about a hundred times the mass of our sun, remnants of the first massive stars. Over billions of years, these fledgling black holes accumulate mass, merging and growing larger, akin to a small goldfish evolving into a massive whale during its formative years. However, recent data from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, challenges this established narrative. One intriguing possibility is the theory of direct collapse, where a primordial gas cloud with a staggering mass of around 10 million suns bypasses the typical star formation process entirely. Instead, it quickly collapses under its own gravity, forming a black hole seed in a singular rapid event. Alternatively, there's the concept of super-Eddington accretion, where a smaller black hole seed feasts on cold hydrogen at an astonishing rate, far exceeding the conventional limits dictated by radiation pressure. This pressure usually acts as a regulatory force, but in the dense and tumultuous environment of the early universe, it can be overwhelmed, allowing for exceptionally rapid growth. These scenarios might sound far-fetched, However, the early universe was a chaotic landscape, characterized by higher densities and temperatures, and richly infused with pristine hydrogen and helium gas, ripe for consumption. The JWST's advanced infrared capabilities have finally granted us the ability to observe this cosmic crime scene in real time, revealing the intricate processes behind the formation of these immense black holes that challenge our previous understanding of cosmic evolution. Why did it take us so long to notice? Dormant black holes are introverts. They don't tweet in X-rays or blast radio jets. JWST's NIR spec took the galaxy's spectrum and spotted tiny velocity smears, 
stars on one side inching toward us, stars on the other inching away. That pattern screams invisible heavyweight. Add the neon fingerprints and the case is closed. Infrared astronomy is basically night vision for the cosmos. It sees heat signatures behind dust curtains that foil every other telescope. At redshift 8.7, the universe is filthy with dust. Without JWST, GS10578's resident monster could have snoozed forever unseen. Multiply by every early galaxy JWST hasn't eyed yet, and we may have missed whole armies of sleeping giants. Stellar mass of the galaxy, about a billion suns. Black hole mass, 400 million. That's not the usual 0.1% sidekick, that's 40% of the cast. So what came first, the galaxy or the black hole? Old story, galaxy forms, gas funnels, black hole grows. New evidence, maybe black hole forms first, its gravity herds gas into a disk, stars ignite inside a pre-made gravitational mold, flip the timeline, hand the black hole the director's chair in act one. If that's common, the missing supermassive seeds aren't missing at all. They're just dozing, hiding in plain sight. Dormant doesn't mean dead. Lob a fresh gas cloud at one of these giants, say during a galaxy merger, and the accretion disk roars back. The black hole becomes a quasar, dumping so much energy into its neighborhood that it can shut down star formation galaxy-wide. Astronomers call this feedback, the thermostat of galaxy evolution. If early galaxies already had oversized black holes, then feedback flipped on early, possibly explaining why some big galaxies we see later are eerily star-free. Same process might have helped ryanize the universe, splitting neutral hydrogen into protons and electrons. The quiet monster today could have been the loudest voice at cosmic dawn. GS 10578 is one galaxy. One, JWST has been open for a couple of years. The JD's patch it surveyed is a postage stamp of sky. Statistically, if we found one, there must be thousands, maybe millions more. That's a crowd of dormant titans, each one tearing a hole in tidy growth models. Next observing cycle, Astronomers will swing NIR spec towards similar redshift galaxies, hunting neon fingerprints and velocity whispers. Every new detection yanks another brick from the wall of conventional wisdom. Okay, you say, 13 billion years ago, why should I care? Because the black holes in today's galaxies, M87 star, SAG A star, Andromeda's P2, were once infants. Their baby photos are buried in the deep infrared, and JWST is the family album. If GS10578's black hole grew via direct collapse or super Eddington gorging, similar channels might still pop up locally. The recent discovery of Gaia BH3, a dormant 33 sun black hole orbiting a star just 2,000 light years away, suggests quiet black holes lurk nearer than we like. Scale that up by eight orders of magnitude, and the cosmic neighborhood feels crowded. Science loves neat stories that survive millions of tests. GS 10578's black hole is the kid who walks in and proves the equation on the board is wrong. Cosmologists now have to shoehorn a 400 million sun gorilla into textbooks that expected polite, gradual growth. Simulations will be torn apart and stitched back together. Observation plans will pivot. Funding proposals will get stamped urgent. And every time we think we've nailed the answer, JWST will drop another image with another oversized silent heart. The pain is the thrill and the promise that the universe still likes surprises. So JWST didn't just bag a big black hole, it caught evidence that the universe's first draft was sketched by giants we never accounted for, and they're probably everywhere. Next time you scroll through a Hubble Deep Field, remember, behind those serene swirls could lie sleeping monsters heavy enough to make our sun feel like dust. If that doesn't make you linger on the night sky, I don't know what will.